According to a KFF tracking poll from 2025, people that trust the CDC a great deal or a fair amount to make the right recommendations on health dropped from 66% to 61% and the FDA was slightly lower. I did a video recently about the FDA called Science Embezzlement with Your Taxes. But today I want to talk about the CDC and their new V-Safe Vaccine Safety Monitoring System. And keep in mind that I'm apparently in the 44% of people that don't really trust the CDC. And I'll just remind you of Exhibit A, directly from the CDC's own database. We somehow went from about 37 million flu cases per year until we had a swine flu scare. And then the numbers tanked to 11 million for that year when they tried to spike the swine flu numbers by swapping influenza and swine flu, allegedly. And then the flu rates went back up to 30 to 40 million per year. And then when COVID arrived, the flu rates literally went down to zero from the CDC because the flu numbers were being classified as COVID infections, allegedly, which definitely increased fear mongering and definitely increased government money flowing to hospitals. This fear mongering also led to draconian lockdowns, which somehow led to less trust in the CDC, shockingly. Anyway, with your tax money, now the CDC is promoting their V-Safe website and reporting system. In summary, V-Safe is one of several vaccine safety monitoring systems which lets you share with the CDC how you or your dependent feels after getting a COVID-19 or RSV vaccine. And it helps the CDC monitor the safety of these vaccines. This all sounds great, right? So let's talk about it. First, over 10 million people have participated in V-Safe. So that's good. And this data has been included in 20 scientific publications to help describe side effects experienced shortly after vaccination and provide safety information. Again, all good stuff. And we'll talk about those 20 scientific publications in a minute. I also created a V-Safe account to see how it works which I'll also circle back to near the end here. First though, it's shocking to me how many people don't know how vaccine safety studies are done. So I'm gonna explain a bit about this here. When pharma companies develop a new drug, believe it or not, the pharma companies don't need to reveal any of the data about the drug. They can cherry pick the data and selectively release whatever they want. They don't need to show it to the FDA and they certainly don't need to show their study data to the public. They can pick and choose the data that they like and present that data to the public. Most people don't know this, so it's worth emphasizing here. Even as a professional doctor or scientist, you can't see the full data from drug studies done by pharma companies. And this obviously presents a problem unless you want to assume that drug companies are flawless and if you assume Drug companies would never hide their worst and darkest findings about their drugs. And this all sounds really bad, but here's the catch. If a drug company develops a new drug and hides the data about some nasty side effect or something that causes injuries in people, these problems will eventually come to light. I'll explain. So let's say a drug company develops an amazing new statin because LDL is so terrible for your heart, but let's say the new statin causes immediate heart attacks in some people. The drug company will find this in their initial studies, and if the drug company hides the data from the public, some people will get heart attacks when they take that new drug, and they'll sue the company. Next, lawyers will swoop in and subpoena the full scientific data from the company. They force the company to give it up. So unless the companies are shredding documents behind closed doors, the nasty side effects will eventually come to light. What I'm saying is this is basically a functional system because the company is incentivized to actually release all the data about whatever new drug they develop 
And then they speed read those crazy side effects on the nonstop pharma commercials all the time on TV channels. They're buying out. Damage in many adults. Humera can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. We've all heard those commercials. This is due to increased risk of death or stroke. Report changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts to your doctor. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles or confusion, which may be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Difficulty moving, tremors, slow or uncontrolled body movements, restlessness and feeling like you need to move, sleepiness, nausea, vomiting, and indigestion are common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. But anyway, here's the catch. With vaccines, you cannot sue the company, even if you have the worst side effects of all time, or even if you die from a vaccine, you can't sue the company. Again, it's absolutely shocking to me, but many people don't know this. In America, we have a separate vaccine court system. This separate court system is called the vaccine court by most people, but it's technically called VICP or the Vaccine Injury Comp Program. And this VICP is a federal program in the US that was established in 1986 for reasons I won't get into. And the VICP provides tiny financial compensation to individuals who have been found to be injured by, and this is important, a VICP covered vaccine. So here's the problem that I hope you can already deduce. If you are a drug company and you find that your vaccine causes a bunch of major problems, you can hide that data. You can hide it from doctors, you can hide it from the CDC and the FDA, and you can release cherry-picked nonsense that suggests your vaccine is 100% effective in preventing severe disease or whatever crazy claim you want to make. You release some cherry-picked data. Actually, no, not even data but you release just some graphs that professional scientific journals allow you to publish, which is crazy. This is why Marsha Angel resigned as the chief editor of the New England Journal of Medicine, by the way. Look it up. But when people start having major health problems because of that vaccine, you can't subpoena the data from the drug companies because the federal government pays out for vaccine claims. That's the point. You can never see the data there's no way to get it. Your lawyer can't subpoena the data, nothing. So with vaccines, you can never know what the safety trials truly find on the topic, again, of vaccines specifically. Plus, there's the obvious problem that these vaccine companies aren't doing true placebo-controlled trials because they inject one group with salt water and one group with vaccine rather than injecting another group of people with all the filler ingredients and comparing that to the full vaccine to check for side effects from the filler materials. Uh, they don't do this basic science. And not only that, after they inject people with salt water rather than the filler material from vaccines, they quickly go back and vaccinate everyone when the short-term study is over. So you can't find any long-term effects because now everyone is vaccinated. So if people have long-term health problems, you now see those problems equally in everyone because everyone ultimately got vaccinated. So now we can just blame global warming. But this is a different story for a different day. But I am grateful that RFK is finally promoting placebo-controlled vaccine studies going forward. And he'll probably investigate long-term harms too unless his registered Democrat wife finds a way to stall his progress. But what RFK is undertaking currently is a radical departure from past practices, as I'm sure you've heard. What is sad is you get people like Paul off it here on NPR saying, I think RFK wants to make vaccines more expensive. Yeah, by doing studies correctly, rather than manipulating the studies to achieve a favorable outcome for vaccine profits. And Paul Offit says RFK is a science denialist by actually doing valid science. Okay, Paul, whatever you say, you're, you're the expert. An attack on Paul Offit is probably an attack on science. Just keep up your award-winning work as the director of the Vaccine Education Center in Philadelphia because our country needs more experts like you on national public radio. People like Paul, by the way, 
never have had YouTube videos removed for misinformation. Not once, not ever, but here he is calling for bad science to continue. Just think about how lopsided these vaccine stories are, and how biased the search engine results are, and how biased the CDC data can be. Anyway, going back to the topic of vaccine injuries, you can't subpoena the actual data from the companies. And when you go to sue, you need to basically go to the DMV to try and get your money. But it's even worse for COVID vaccines because these mRNA polyethylene glycol liposome things were rolled out under the Public Readiness and Emergency Preparedness Act. So because it was an emergency to get these vaccines out, after they changed the official definition of a vaccine, you can't even sue the normal federal system, the VICP. Now you need to process your DMV claim with the CCP. I mean the CICP, which is the Countermeasures Injury Compensation Program. Because it was such a huge emergency to push this mRNA polyethylene glycol liposome thing on everyone, or else we'd have a winter of severe illness and death, I should have known not to use Google searches for this. Uh, here it is. For the unvaccinated, you're looking at a winter of severe illness and death. And probably a long stretch where you need a vaccine passport to travel. Or even to hold your current job in many cases. But my point is, the topic of vaccines is messy from top to bottom. And at least while all the public trust is dropping, at least we have the V-SAFE program to report our problems to the CDC. So we can gather some genuine scientific data, right? Well, good news, I created a vSafe account with the CDC, and even though I quit Mayo Clinic because they started forcing the experimental COVID vaccine on employees, so I never got vaccinated, obviously, I still told the system that I had the Pfizer vaccine over a year ago, and it gave me a few shallow questions and told me to submit. I was so surprised by how shallow the questions were I created a fake dependent and told the system that Bob J had a COVID vaccine just a few days ago. It, it, it literally gave Bob J the exact same shallow questions it gave me. Look here, have you ever had a COVID vaccine? What brand, what date? Were you immunocompromised? What is your current state of health? Irrespective of whether you were sick because you have the flu, you're sick because you got food poisoning, you're sick because you eat at McDonald's every day and now you have acid reflux. Nothing specific. Just what is your current state of health? And then they ask if you've seen a doctor or other healthcare professional. Not about anything specific, just generally, have you seen a doctor? And finally, the big reveal, were you hospitalized overnight during the past 12 months? Never mind that I told the system I had taken the vaccine a few days before. Now they want to know if I was hospitalized to have my appendix removed or if I was hospitalized for any unrelated reason in the past year. Nothing about vaccines and specific dates and specific illnesses or specific side effects. It's literally a joke because that's the end. That's it. That was the last question before you hit submit. And keep in mind, this program is supposed to be a vaccine safety monitoring system. And it helps the CDC monitor safety. And over 20 scientific publications have come out of this terrible database. This is insane. Of course, 44% of the population doesn't trust the CDC. Those are the 44% that are paying attention. Yet these are supposedly the best data gathering tools we have for understanding how experimental vaccines are damaging the hearts of young people or causing cancer or whatever. This is why I'm talking to people almost every single week that are younger than age 30 and they're having heart problems. That started around the time they got the COVID vaccine that was forced on them or they would have been fired under age 30. When I used to do autopsies at Boston University Medical School every week, I almost never saw plaque in people's arteries uh, under the age of 50. And now it's suddenly exploding and you can't find a decent study on these young people. Uh, there's a few studies that show problems, by the way, if you look at Peter McCullough's work, for example. But there are many other studies saying, oh, it's okay, actual COVID would, was much worse than the vaccine. And this is why the medical system is suddenly reporting that science shows how a surge of anger 
now raises heart attack risk. So we're blaming some number of heart attacks on anger. And obviously the UK is finding that hot showers can precipitate a heart attack in young people. Heaven forbid we check to see whether they were vaccinated because over 90% of people above age 12 in the UK were force vaccinated twice. But moving on to that dangerous glare of headlights from oncoming traffic, that's being reported as increasing heart conditions, also in the UK, obviously. And a study on heart disease uh, with young people would never be complete without looking at the obvious problems from climate change. Apparently, already linked to a large rise in heart disease related deaths. So that group of people could not possibly have damaged their hearts from anything COVID related. It was already classified as climate change, or it was categorized as a problem from hot or cold showers, car headlights, or even surges of anger, probably because you're being forced to get experimental vaccines. My overall point here is be careful when you find research on the topic of vaccines or pharma drugs in general, but especially vaccines, because you can't even subpoena the real data in those cases. It's a complicated mess when money is so deeply involved and huge monopolistic corporations are involved and the media is being paid vast sums by these same Goliath companies to run annoying ads that nobody wants to see to ensure that the media never runs a negative piece about the real causes of health problems, such as medical error, being the third leading cause of death in America. Anyway, hopefully this sheds some light on the vSafe reporting system and this overall topic in general. And hopefully this video doesn't harm my channel here on YouTube because that's the war on information that we are dealing with these days. So vSafe out there and defend the First and Second Amendments.